unfailing God, you go before me, my every breath is held in your grace. Welcome to episode three of our series, Worship Leading for Small Churches. If you missed episode one and two, go back and watch those. Um, there, there's some great stuff in that. And then in this episode, we're gonna reference stuff that we've already talked about in those episodes. In this episode, we're talking about tips for leading worship by yourself. It takes that next step of making your team even smaller. I'm once again joined by Josh Powell and Rachel Wiley, both of them members of Transmission. Uh, Josh, starting with you. Uh, tell me about a time where, where you led worship by yourself or maybe even the first time you led worship by yourself. Uh, yeah, I, actually, when I, when I first started to learn how to play guitar, um, I went to a church, a Salvation Army church in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, there were a couple of like young people at this church, and we all said, hey, we should start a band together. Nobody knew how to play anything. We were all <laughs> learning together. Uh, so I was starting to learn how to play guitar. There was a guy uh, learning how to play drums, a, a, like a youth leader learning how to play bass, and we were all learning at the same time. Uh, so that was kind of, it was a fun uh, community building uh, exercise for us, and we were so bad. Uh, <laughs> but we had such a good time doing it, and we had such a supportive church uh, that, like, they really supported what we were doing. And I, I know, I know it sounded bad, <laughs> uh, but they they loved it, and they, they encouraged us. So I'm grateful to that Salvation Army, uh, Charleston, South Carolina church, for yeah. uh, helping us get started. Um, my parents are, um, they're pastors with the Salvation Army, mm-hmm. so we get moved around a lot. And where we got moved to after that, uh, I was kind of by myself. Um, and uh, and uh, it was a college, actually. College was the first time where I actually had to start taking on the responsibilities mm. of leading worship uh, by myself. Um, and that is that is a next level kind of experience because you don't really have that bond of, of the worship leaders behind you um, to fall back on. You you are it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I learned in that moment, uh, in those times, that it's the preparation that can make or break uh, a worship moment. Uh, and I learned that quickly. Uh, so that's where I started to, to develop the preparation techniques and choosing songs, um, picking the right keys, how I'm transitioning into and out of songs. Uh, that was very formative uh, for me. Um, so I, 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 those of you who are worship leaders, I think you probably have had a similar kind of experience mm-hmm. where you're by yourself for the first time, you realize the gravity of this responsibility. So you, you either take it seriously and grow, or you let it get the best of you and you realize what you really need to, to work on. But yeah. yeah. Rachel, as a vocalist, I don't, I don't know if you ever led worship solely by yourself, mm-hmm. um, uh, but, but, but tell me about a time where where you were maybe the lead for your for the first time, the lead vocalist, um, talking to the congregation for the first time, yeah. which is super scary even now. But. Yeah, <laughs> I I think there have been plenty of times where I probably have said things that I think sounded great <laughs> from the platform, and then I come down off of it and someone says, do you realize what you just said? That was blasphemy. That was blasphemy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, I thought I was quoting scripture. And that may have happened to me last week. It was not. <laughs> well, now we need to go back and look at <laughs> that. Um, but there... There are a lot of times actually now that I end up uh, leading on my own, but with someone like Josh or someone who can um, cover the instrumental side of things, which is very nice. But when I was younger, uh, my parents are also pastors with the Salvation Army, and we would travel and we would end up in small churches. And uh, one of the churches needed Sunday morning covered, and my parents, being the loving parents that they are, just... Well, our daughter does music and she leads worship, so that would be perfect. Uh, And it was the first time and the last time for a while that I played uh, piano and sang and did all of the leading on my own. And it was probably the quickest worship set I've ever led because my nerves kicked in at about the intro and I rushed everything because my hands were shaking so bad Mm. that I just wanted to get it over with. So I don't know that it was a pleasant experience for anyone in the chapel, but I did it and hopefully the Lord was glorified and I don't want to relive it, so. The Lord was glorified. (laughs) 
<laughs> for, for me, uh, my, my parents aren't, aren't pastors in the Salvation Army. So, so I grew up in, in a church um, uh, my, my whole life and, and, until I moved out. Um, but uh, our bass player just left. So that's how I was thrown into it. Mm. It's like, oh, you're learning guitar. Mm. Bass is somewhat easier <laughs> to pick up. Here you go. Like, it's, we, we're, we're vacant a bass player. There you go. So, so that was me jumping in like at, at, at 13, like, like in wow. a, a, a praise team um, environment, which is scary all, all, already by itself. Um, but then we had a guitar player leave a few years mm-hmm. later. So then it was, all right, it's your turn to take this over now. And you sing a little bit, so <laughs> it's it's now your turn to yeah. be the worship leader. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd say that 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 my dad you know, has always really been the worship leader, like when I was growing up. But he's back in the drums, mm. and uh, it's it's very distant from the congregation. Yeah. So it's like I had to grow up real quick. I had to learn real quick um, with being right there in front with everybody looking at you. Yes, I wasn't fully by myself, mm. but talking and welcoming everybody mm-hmm. you are by yourself yeah. and 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 that that is very very nerve-wracking um with all of these experiences uh, the the key point is your congregation isn't comparing you leading worship by yourself to a full praise team mm. they yeah. just want to be led in worship yeah yeah and i think uh, like for, for you like you there was a need and i think that that happens for a lot of us there, there was a need uh, and you made yourself available to fill that need. Yeah. And in that, the Lord was glorified. Your congregation had worship support because you made yourself available. And that's and that's the key thing. In, in worship, like there, we're always going to make mistakes. We're never going to be the best yeah. of the be-all, end-all. But you make yourself available, and the Lord will use you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. First question here, uh, what are some benefits and difficulties uh, benefits and also difficulties mm. uh, of leading worship by yourself. Let's start with benefits. Yeah, what, benefits. What's, what's, what are some positives? Uh, I think it's sometimes easier to lead by yourself because you only have to worry about yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are times where, like, you're leading worship, the Spirit will say something to you or you'll have an idea of a direction you want to take this moment uh, and you have complete freedom and flexibility to do that in that moment because you don't have to communicate that to, to anyone else. Let's say you need to redo that chorus. You don't have to turn around and be like, guys, we're going to do the chorus one more time. <laughs> yeah. Throw, if throw, you're, if throw the chorus you're by yourself, <laughs> yeah. you're, like, you really only have to worry about your pro-presenter operator. Uh, but for, for you know all intents and purposes, you have the, the freedom and the flexibility yeah. to do that. So you can look at, the, look at that as a benefit. It obviously will have... Uh, it's a challenge. We'll talk about that in a second. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think a difficulty that comes with that is that everything is then on you, and you are yeah. now having to focus on the speaking parts, yeah. the singing, the instrumental aspects. And for some people, that becomes overwhelming very quickly. Some people, yeah. not phased at all. Um, but for I think the majority, it can be overwhelming to have that many moving parts going on at one time. Yeah. Um, and specifically for me, who does have the gift of people to normally play for me so that I have a little more freedom in leading vocally, I don't have as much freedom. I can't give as many verbal cues or different things because you are carrying that melody the whole time and you can't really move from that too, too much. Yeah. Uh, Here's another benefit, I think. Um, A lot of times, uh, and I think this would also apply to worship leaders who have the blessing of a band. Uh, but don't be afraid to do a solo acoustic worship set uh, because there's there's this sense of intimacy hmm. almost with just a solo um, vocalist, guitar player, keyboard player, just like a solo worship leader uh, leading worship. It kind of draws people into it. And uh, like, I, like I have the, the, the blessing of a, a, a full team on a regular basis, and we still sometimes will go down to just one person leading worship because it's a very, it can be a very powerful moment. Mm-hmm. And I think particularly for Rachel, I don't know if you've ever done this, but you lead worship without mentioning it at all with no instru- instrumentation, mm-hmm. just a cappella worship. Yeah. Like, have you ever you ever done anything like that? Yeah, and I think it, it does create an intimacy. And some of my favorite times to do that are like, summertime at our youth camps we're sitting around the fire and everyone it just kind of breaks down any barriers and it really is just we're lifting our voices up we're all entering into worship together and it's this 
I mean, it's what you're going to hear in heaven. It's just all everyone's voices mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Uh, and that's a really nice yeah. way to go about it as well. Yeah. yeah. So I would I would caution you to to avoid thinking of like you as the only uh, instrument instrumentalist or the only vocalist as a solo worship leader. I would caution you against th- caution you against thinking of that as a a disadvantage or a challenge. Yeah. I think there can be a real blessing to that. And those of you who have full teams, yeah. g- give give the solo worship leading a go uh, sometimes because I think it can be a really powerful moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And and then within that, what are some hard things when you're leading worship by yourself? Um, like like what what are 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 the biggest challenges? Um, what are the scary moments? Like like I know I know just having everybody look at you is one thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, because that that in itself, everybody's waiting to start the song, yeah. and you're still mm-hmm. welcoming. They're waiting to for you to say, "Please stand." Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. what, what, what are some What are some difficulties? I think for maybe those who are doing things like playing piano, where your hands you're having to hit a lot of keys at one time. You are the sole person. If there is a chord that does not happen the way that it should, if there's a <laughs> voicing that doesn't quite come out the way that you wanted it to, you are the only person with your hands on an instrument. So there is that added uh, maybe anxiety or nervousness um, that that you have to really be on your A game the whole time because there isn't another instrument that can maybe kind of come in and cover. Yeah, Yeah. you you can't stop playing. If you play the wrong chord, you can't go, oh, I messed up, (laughs) and then somehow jump back in. Like, like you you, you gotta keep pushing through. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like one of the challenges I have uh, if I'm leading by myself is not feeling like uh, I am responsible for people's engagement in worship. Mm, uh, it's all, like my my role is to provide an atmosphere. It's not my job to make sure people are worshiping. That's, that's between yeah. them and the Holy yeah. Spirit. Uh, but a lot of times if I'm by myself, uh, I feel like I'm I'm having to control so much. I need to control the moment as well, and that's not my job. And a lot of times, when when I get into that mode and I feel like I'm having to uh, manipulate the moment in that way, it becomes a detraction from what the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit is doing. Yeah. So one of the, one of the difficulties is knowing that you are you are not in control of mm-hmm. the moment. Like your your job is to only be available and to be um, uh, an empty vessel for the Spirit to use. Yeah. 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 Here's the cliche, cliche question. What's, what's one thing you wish you knew the first, uh, what's one thing you wish you knew the first time you were leading worship? by yourself or first time leading with a group? Well, how to play <laughs> piano better would have been a great start. Um, I think that there you will find more grace in the congregation than what you think. Yeah. Hmm. I think if I could have maybe psyched myself out less going hmm. into it and had the mindset or the spiritual maturity maybe that I have now compared to then of it's not my responsibility to make sure that people – are engaging in worship. That is between them and the Lord. And like you said, you can only create that space. But it in the very beginning, it was that feeling of this is solely on me. And yeah. if I mess up here, mm-hmm. then worship stops. And what what a prideful thing, honestly, yeah. Yeah. to think that I myself can stop worship mm. uh, happening. That's It's just not the case. But I think if I knew that then, maybe there would have been a little more uh, holy confidence in the picture. I think that's something that 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 people still need to be cautious of. Mm. Um, l- like you said, worship is between them and, and God. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we're here to set an atmosphere. Yeah. Um, the title is worship leaders, but, but really it's between them and God. We yeah. can't... Um, yeah, yeah, so... That's something you wish you knew before, but yeah. I feel like that's something people can learn now. Absolutely, that, that that be be made aware of there. Yeah, Josh, what about you? Yeah, I think uh, I wish I knew the importance of preparation, mm-hmm. like being uh, fully prepared for worship. Uh, and this this is not a flex, but it does show my age. I I am very serious. When I learned when I was first leading worship. We had overhead transparencies for lyrics. Wow! So I know You're we had old. a we had a folder of <laughs> overhead transparencies, 
Uh, and there, to, there was, to to all the, the the young people, yeah, that is an old projector. Uh, yeah. It is, it is an old projector. It. It's it's a transparent you, piece of paper that's got the lyrics that you slide in front of the projector. Well, you put it on top of the <laughs> yeah yeah you put it on top of that and it, and it projects on yeah. the wall. It's so it's I would old, old I would come technology. to church and I would say I heard this great song. We're going to do the song this Sunday, <laughs> and then I realized oh yeah we haven't printed that overhead page yet, so I can't do that song. I didn't prepare. I didn't fully take on the role uh, of being fully prepared for worship. So that's some, that's one thing that I had to learn the hard way. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then it, even even if you're by yourself, you need to prepare as if you have a team. Yeah. Um, I I think that that you still need to have personal practice. Personal practice may be even more important when you're leading worship every Sunday by yourself. Um, but you could still have a rehearsal time. Yeah. Um, think of it as. Uh, you're getting used to the room or whatever, or running through your sets, making sure everything's plugged in. Yeah. All of that is still very, very important, even if you're leading worship by yourself. Yeah. Um, and then having a time before Sunday, like we mentioned uh, in, in, in the previous episodes um, with, with scheduling rehearsals, um, having, having a time before Sunday to run through the songs to make sure that your pro presenter, your... Um, your uh, whoever's running your slides, whoever's running audio, um, mm-hmm. is prepared. You yeah. can run through the songs, even though you're leading worship by yourself, um, that, that you need to prepare as if you had a full team, yeah. um, even if you're, you're by yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are some tips you would give to someone new in leading worship by themselves? They're, they're brand new. What are some tips that you'd give them? Um, give them a, a head start, maybe something that wasn't, that wasn't told to you before. I'll start with you, Rachel. (laughs) Uh, I think, oh gosh, someone new in worship leading on their own. I think to have, I think I said it earlier, but a a holy confidence Mm. in what you're doing um, because we are worship leaders and we are leading those in our congregation and people lead when, or people follow when the leader is doing what they should do. So if we are preparing and we have all of our stuff ready and we yeah. can lead with this confidence knowing that we are setting this environment, we yeah. are we have already met with the Lord, we uh, have prayed over this time, and now we can lead them in worship, they're going to follow. Because naturally there are going to be people in your congregation who are nervous about singing out loud, or maybe they're a little uncomfortable or Honestly, there may be that person in your congregation who's just looking for a reason to not have to engage. Mm -hmm. So if you can come into it and lead strongly, and sometimes that means not apologizing when you want to, when you naturally feel like you need to say, Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm I'm not that great of a player. I messed up here. Or I'm sorry I'm by myself. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm by myself. You know, I wish I wish we had more kind of thing. But just going in it strongly and walking in this role and this calling that the Lord has given you as a worship leader, doing that boldly so that your congregation can follow. Yeah. Yeah. Not not apologizing is, is very, very important. Um, because you don't want to seem disappointed yeah. that you don't have a team. You don't want to feel uh, like like God hasn't blessed your church with you as the worship mm-hmm. leader, with you leading worship. Um, th- th- there's no reason to apologize before a worship set because then the congregation's already going to be in in a bad mood. Like yeah, why is he for why is he not yeah. happy? Yeah. Like why is he not ready to lead worship? Um, and then even even if you play a wrong note or play a wrong chord, you don't have to be oh I'm sorry I'm I'm not yeah. that good or I'm sorry that I messed up. Um, like, like there, there's no reason to start uh, worship in in a down mood like that, yeah. even if you're by yourself. Yeah, yeah. I got two thoughts. One, uh, AJ said this at, at the end of the last episode, um, but it's okay to not sound like the recording. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's okay for you to play as to take the song and to make it yours, to simplify it down to a version and a, a method for you to. Uh, excel and to su- succeed with. Uh, it's okay to not sound like the recording. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you your offering uh, is a holy offering to the Lord in worship. Um, so make it your own. Be confident in it. Prepare enough so that you you are confident in it. But it's okay to make it as simple as you need it to. Yeah. Um, the second thing, uh, because this is... Uh, what we do is relational, okay, in, in a bunch of different ways. So it's relational in that we are 
we're engaging in a conversation with God. It's relational in that we are engaging in a conversation with our congregation. Uh, and because of that, we need to do what anything that we can to foster the relationship between us and the congregation. It's not a performance. We're, they're not watching us perform for them. Uh, they are joining in with us in this act of worship. Uh, and for them to do that, there is this bond between us and them. So one of the ways that you can do that is to, to get off the platform, to shake hands, to uh, learn names, yeah. to ask about their families, uh, engage in other leadership uh, activities in your church, get to know them on a personal uh, face-to-face, first name basis. Uh, and when you do that, you start to, to develop the relationship that they trust you uh, and that they will uh, follow you as, as you lead. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and, then, and then when you're on stage leading, um, like be inviting as well. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Whether this is a big team or if it's just you, even more important when it's just you, eye contact. That's something that yeah. I need to work on is <laughs> it's opening my eyes. Um, but, but lo- looking at people like that, that is just very, very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, convey the message with, with the lyrics that you're saying, but also say, Hey, I'm inviting you to worship as well. Yeah. Um, I think and, a small example yeah. of that is uh, I led worship at a church for four years that was kind of in this transition from everything being very straight laced and very just we're going from top to bottom of the program and that's it. Yeah. And I come in for that and I leave straight out and I really don't mix and mingle with anyone else. Um, and we wanted to shift that atmosphere and we wanted to do so in a way that just kind of helped them along and wasn't forcing them into anything. And so we just started opening the worship set every Sunday with just good morning church family. Mm. Like we are going to enter into a time where we are worshiping together. And slowly but surely you saw them just kind of take a breath and just kind of sink into it and we are a family. We are we are doing this together. We are one body. So doing just the small things, changing maybe the verbiage that you're using, making that eye contact, just allowing them to feel like they are also taking part in this and that we're all welcome. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned communication before the service or yeah. after the service, right? Going up and talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to your congregation. Yeah. Uh, before and after your set, welcome everybody. Yeah. Like, have eye contact with people, look, looking at all of that, um, even even a closing prayer, like, yeah. like be inviting with all of that. And then cues of where to go in the song, Yeah, mm-hmm. right? Don't be afraid to do that. And if you have a big praise band or even if you're by yourself, hey, let's sing that chorus again. And then like yeah. lead them, right? You're mm-hmm. worship leaders. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, points about, uh, about just, um, which we, we could touch on this, um, but when you're leading worship by yourself, don't overplay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's there's no reason to to overplay. Yeah. Um what's your what's your take on 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 overplaying? Yeah, like, I th- I mean, like I said earlier, I think we we get into the trap that we have to sound like the recording. Yeah. That we have to uh control everything and um we have to fill the space. Mm-hmm. Um but it, it's okay to keep things simple. It's okay it's okay to let uh let the moment breathe. Give, give the spirit some space uh, to work. Uh, I think when we when we overplay, I think we we put we we're putting too much out there. We're we're taking time and um, attention away from what the spirit could be doing. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I always like to remember, like this is not a coffee house gig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is this is leading people in worship. It's not about you. Mm. This is this yeah. is one hundred percent about God. Yeah. And and having people draw closer to God through you leading worship, um, w- with that, uh, with with not overplaying. Another key point is is using dynamics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like we talked about this with the small team. I think it's even more important when it's just you by yourself. Yeah. Uh, like, like we talked about, you, you don't have to be so monotonous. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't think that was the word you used, uh, but uh, so uh, similar with with your, your set list, yeah. the, the song stays the same. Um, like, like how, can, how can you make dynamics? How, how can you make dynamics, Rachel, uh, like with just you by yourself? Yeah, well, I, Josh mentioned it earlier and just sometimes just cutting out instrumentally yeah. and just mm-hmm. leading a cappella um, yeah. so that they have that space to do that. Sometimes it's you pulling back. If it's a song yeah. that your congregation knows 
well and you know they can sing it without you, sometimes you back off and just allow them to sing. And that has a, a beautiful um, sense of community in that as well because yeah. they hear everyone else around them. And it's not just, oh, we're listening for the person on stage, but it's we can sing this together. But that in and of itself is going to change your dynamics, just pulling yeah. out or adding or simple things like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sure Josh probably has some things for the instrumental side. Yeah, I mean, I, I think whoever whoever is kind of driving the music side of it, I think um, the the team will generally take their cue for dynamics from that lead instrument. So like I like I play acoustic guitar. I like to lead from the acoustic guitar, and to do that, like I, I use my pick attack, my pick strength, uh, to help lead uh, those dynamic levels. So my band knows if I'm digging in, you know, if I'm if I'm subdividing a lot, if I'm really accenting, you know, the quarter note, they're gonna they want to be big. If they feel me kind of back off in my subdivisions or uh, in my um, uh, strumming intensity or the attack, they know that I'm pulling back. So uh, and that's something that as a, as a leader, I've tried to uh, instill in them to we're all listening to each other and we're, we're uh, playing with each other so that uh, when I, when I do lead from the guitar, uh, they're able to follow. Yeah. Yeah. And all of that happens when you're by yourself as well. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That, that driving strum pattern versus just, a, a, a mellow strum pattern or or even just whole notes yeah holding things out yeah. or setting a pick down and finger picking yeah. um arpeggiating on a mm -hmm. piano uh, not driving the whole time yeah. holding out whole notes or or um making your chord shapes smaller yeah uh, all all of this adds adds contrast um and there's no band behind you so you have to provide all of that all of that different contrast yeah with choosing songs which we're about to get into um uh, we really need to focus on melody-driven songs. Um, like like I, we, we mentioned this before with a smaller team, no lead lines, riffs, electric guitar. You're by yourself. Yeah. If, if, <laughs> if you're playing piano or acoustic guitar, there's no like, – like, like I said earlier, it's not a gig, but how are you going to have a guitar solo if – <laughs> There's no chords yeah. behind it. Like, yeah. like that, that. That's 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 not needed. My, my key point, which which I'll I'll throw it to you guys uh, soon, is um, like choose well-known songs for the congregation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 hard when you're by yourself. This could be another difficulty. It's hard by yourself to introduce new songs. Yeah. Because nobody else knows them. Yeah. <laughs> so you're the only one singing. Yeah. You're the only one playing. Yeah. Um, which might be a benefit because nobody knows if you mess up the words or, <laughs> or, or the chords. Yeah. But you're the only one who knows that. And if the whole congregation doesn't, they're all solely relying mm -hmm. on you. Yeah. Um, so choosing well-known songs, slowly mixing in new songs uh, is very key. So th that's, that's my take on that. I'll throw it to you guys. Uh, how, how do you choose songs uh, yeah. for, for leading worship by yourself? Yeah, if you're by yourself, I think song selection... Uh, and it, it, it's it, it's a crucial uh, step to your preparation, right? Um, I think you you said what like, would be my first uh, consideration is familiarity. Mm -hmm. uh, is the song that we're choosing, the song that we're singing, is this something that as a as a body of believers that we're all going to be able to engage in? Um, I love I love introducing new songs because, like I said, it, it expands our worship vocabulary. Yeah. It, like it can't be a bad thing to have more ways to praise God, to, yeah. to express our thanks for what he's doing. Um, but our, our congregation needs to be able to sing along with that. So there, I mean, there are ways that you could do that. And I think we'll talk about this in, in a, uh, another episode, but uh, you know, teaching the chorus of a new song before you actually sing it, it gives them uh, at least something to, to sing along with uh, to, you know, two or three times throughout that song. Um, but like AJ said, you know, you, you, you want to be sparing, uh, in how you, uh, in, in the amount of new songs that you introduce into your set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then even though, if, even though it might be a new song, having it singable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Is very, very, is, is, is even more important. I know I keep yeah. saying that, but yeah. I, like you said, the pie example, mm -hmm. um, if you didn't see episode two, go back and watch it <laughs> uh, with the pie example, um, you're the whole pie. Yeah. You have to apply. You you have to do everything. And now, if it's a new song, that uh, singable melody has to be even more important. Yep. So yeah. then, by the second time you go around the chorus, mm -hmm. they know the words. 
they know the melody. When you get to verse three, if the song has verse three, they've heard the melody. Now they can place the words as to where the melody and the rhythm is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's it's it's very very key. Yeah, I think um, a way that you yeah. can introduce new songs like that is if you have a, a Sunday coming up when you know that you have maybe uh, for the offering, maybe there's music that's needed, or maybe there is a, a time of commitment or an altar call. Um, that you can provide music behind, you can introduce a new song yeah. because it can be done as a special. Mm-hmm. And then we are worship leaders, but we are part of the congregation still. Yeah. So don't be afraid after the service. If you maybe have a few people in the congregation that you want to just ask and say, hey, what did you think about the song that that was played during that? What, what are your thoughts? And kind of gauge it that way too yeah. so that if you do find that it's maybe resonating with a few people, then maybe that's something that you lead the next week or maybe two weeks from then uh, and just gauge it that way. Yeah. yeah. And another an, this is another way to introduce new stuff. Uh, you can take every opportunity uh, you can to get your people to listen to the song ahead of time. I was, I was just about mm-hmm. to say that. So, yeah. uh, and <laughs> we, we do this sometimes, but not as often as we should. But uh, how many of you actually send out uh, song uh, links uh, or set list uh, links for people, to, your congregation mm-hmm. to listen to throughout the week? I think that that's a great, I, I don't do it, but I should. That's a great yeah. way to get your congregation thinking about and singing these songs throughout the week ahead of when they would come together and sing them corporately. So you can just send out a Spotify link or an Apple Music or a YouTube link. Everybody can access YouTube Mm -hmm. uh, to the songs that you're going to sing on Sunday, and it gives everybody a fighting chance Mm -hmm. uh, to actually engage. Yeah. 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 So so then when they do get to just you leading a new song, or even if it's an old song where half the congregation knows it or whatever, yeah. they're, they're more accustomed to it. Yeah. They've been listening to that. That's on their mind. That's been in their personal worship mm-hmm. um, throughout the week. And then now we get to sing it as a congregation, yeah. Which, yeah. which is great. Yeah, that's, that's something that I need to do more of. We, we've talked about it within, um, within the, the small group, the pastors, and, and, and uh, me, me as the worship leader of yeah. s- send, sending a list out. Because yeah. um, I'm, I'm kind of at a new church, um, mm-hmm. leading worship at, an, at a new place. Um, um, and building that community with with the uh, congregation yeah. is yeah. very very key. Yeah. Um, and and <laughs> just 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 a just a note. Uh, uh, just this past Sunday, so a couple days ago, mm-hmm. uh, 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 an older gentleman in in my congregation who's who's in my small group. He um, we, we we've built a connection quick quickly mm-hmm. through, through the through the little bit that I've known him, and he comes up and says, "One of your best." One of your best. <laughs> I was like, "What is that? What are you talking about?" He's like, "He's like, I, I think it's, I think it was one of your best sets." And we did, I thank God. Yeah. Mm. So, which I don't think he's Bold. ever, I don't think he's ever <laughs> yeah. heard of. Yeah. Um. But but we got we got him up dancing. My wife, who leads nice. worship with me, oh, uh, awesome. she she said, "We're gonna teach you some dance moves." <laughs> So it's like she, she's doing all dance moves and, and got old people spinning around. Love uh, it. You, you pick me up, you turn me around. So they got to turn around. Yeah. Uh, some of it. them only turned around and then got finished turning around halfway through the song. <laughs> sorry, the it takes chorus. a minute. It takes so, a minute. took a little bit. Um, but, but then he came up to me and goes, I want your best. Mm. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you mean one of your best? Like, what, what does that mean? He's like, no, the worship set. Like, mm. like it, it, it really hit home, yeah. um, which, is, which is great. Which is, I thank God. Which is a raw, raw yeah. song. Yeah, I had I had one of the older gentlemen in my church. And I think what that there. what that tells me is like it speaks to the importance of uh, as worship leaders, we have to be building community with yes. our mm-hmm. congregation. Yep. It's not a performance. Yeah, we don't want them to just watch us and and to see us sing on a Sunday. We want them to uh, join with us, and that only happens when there is relationship yep. between you. And that's yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you you touched on it, Rachel. I, I, I don't want to get too far away. Hit hit the question in there. What are some differences in playing um, and 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 not really like, kind of leading worship um, d- during a worship set versus an altar call? Like like you mentioned that how there's you can introduce a new song, um, yeah. but what are differences in, in in your playing as an acoustic guitar player or a pianist? Uh, I mean, as a as a guitar player, I have to do. I, I, at my church, I end up um, playing for altar calls ninety uh, percent of the time, mm-hmm. and I think it's because in my in my church, I, there's there's a bunch of great there's a ton of great musicians. Uh, I tend to be the default altar call person because I can sing and play at the same time, and a lot of the others they like they're great piano players but aren't comfortable singing along with it as well. Um, 
but as when I approach it as a um, well, first when, when I'm picking songs because I end up choosing songs for the altar call, those I want for the most part to be very familiar because uh, mm-hmm. these are these are songs that are encouraging a response from yep. people and familiarity uh, when they can dig down deep and and really know these songs from their from you know their history or their their past. Uh, they don't have to search for the words of these songs. They just know them, uh, and that will uh, a lot of times elicit a response. Uh, so I'm choosing very familiar songs uh, in, in the time of response time. Um, but f- for my playing, uh, I tend to go more finger style, and I try to pick out the melody as well because we. Um, I try to, to give... Uh, at least once or twice through of me just picking out the melody while I'm courting without actually singing, uh, just to give people time to meditate and to personally respond, uh, so that I'm not singing over everything that they're doing. Uh, but it is, it is much more focused it is much more intentional and, um, quieter, I guess. Yeah. Mm. I think, uh, it can go, one of two ways. Sometimes it's that I tend to go more simple, mm. and especially if I'm wanting the congregation to sing with me and just really allowing them to, like Josh said, really know the song and just break it down to the lyrics that they've probably memorized at this point yeah. because they've just sung it so many times. Or there are some instances, um, for me personally, uh, Oh, Come to the Altar for a, a while was the song that was asked for when I was mm. asked to do altar calls. And when I'm leading that song congregationally, I don't do too many riffs and runs because I want people to sing with me. I want Mm -hmm. them to be able to stay with me. But if I'm doing an an altar call or a time response, I'm still not getting crazy. We're not, you know, Beyonce riffs (laughs) left and right. But I have a little bit more room if I know that it's more of a time of reflection and maybe they're not singing with me. Then I have a little bit more flexibility in what I'm doing melodically. So I think yeah. sometimes that's the question. Is it a time of response? Is it a time of reflection? Yeah. What maybe is the the goal there? And that's a good distinction because I, I think I think those are uh they could be different times. I, I know like at, at my church we don't often uh make the distinction between a time of reflection and a time of response for an altar mm-hmm. call. Uh they could be different uh objectives. Yeah. So that's that's a good point. Like you know, you if you know if it's a time of reflection, uh, you just want them to reflect. And then you you probably do have a lot more flexibility to, 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 in song selection and style um, because you're not necessarily asking them to engage with the song. Yeah, yeah, it's a good yeah. thought. And, and within that, um, maybe maybe not asking them to engage in the song. Um, like you you mentioned it, where where you're asked to do it. Um, where you're just going up by yourself, mm-hmm. um, and that's obviously making the song simpler. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like we don't always need the verses sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes singing "Oh, come to the altar," um, which has great verses. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you're inviting people to come to the altar, so just sing the chorus. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then having the melody be played. Like, like all all of this is tied together. All of these are different different things that you can then um, apply to that. Um, but then you don't need the full song. Like I, like I said, you, you don't need the verses. You don't need the full band behind you. Yeah. The full band, band is welcome to, um, but if, if it's a, a more personal moment for altar calls yeah. or time of reflection, you don't need the song to be the exact same. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need this build into the third chorus yeah. and then boom, we're big, because yeah. then people are kneeling at the altar. And, and that it, is, again, like what we mentioned in yeah. the past episodes, very, very distracting. Yeah. I think it could be... Uh, you know, a, a situational decision because there are times when, um, like I will, I will yeah. use the verses. Uh, and I think, I think I end up using the verses a lot of the time because, uh, like if you think about it, the verse, verse of a song is, is actually where you're telling mm. the story. It's like they, the verses tend to have more meat in them than the chorus. Um, but the chorus is the the drive home point yeah. of the song. Mm-hmm. So you've got like, you know, the chorus is where we live a lot of the time. Um, that or the bridge. Or yeah, or the bridge. <laughs> but if, you know, if your if your time of response is, you know, six, seven, eight minutes long, mm-hmm. 
uh, sometimes just singing the same chorus over and over can yeah. be a distraction. So yeah. you, uh, like I, I like to have at least one backup song yeah. in mind every time I get up so that I know if the spirit moves mm -hmm. and people are, are responding, they're at the altar, I have something else I can go to yeah. just to kind of keep it fresh. So that, yeah. like we're not singing the same Spirit of the Living God chorus <laughs> 50 times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or after everybody's already came to the altar, yeah. you're still yeah. singing. Go come to the altar. I right. think. I think <laughs> right. some you have of that second song. I think some of what comes into play there is. I mean, we've talked about preparation both uh, logistically and spiritually, but some of that comes from you spending time with the Lord beforehand yeah. and really discerning what it is that we're going to next. Because there are times that we we do altar calls together a lot when we're on the road as transmission, and we. It, it will be where we're in the middle of something and we will look at each other and go, we're going we're gonna to switch to this one or I think we're going here. or And it's just that spending time with the Lord so that you can discern when the Holy Spirit is saying, let's move. Yeah. Or maybe we do need to sing that chorus or those verses six times in a row because mm -hmm. this yeah. is where we need to stay. Right. Yeah. And, then, and then being aware of that moment. You're exactly mm -hmm. right. Um, uh, have that preparation and that time uh, with God. Yeah. And God, please bless me through whatever may come during yeah. this during this altar call. Um, yeah. um, but then being aware and then knowing how to respond within that. Yeah. Um, being on your toes. It's yeah. it's 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 a it's a scary situation. Again, you're leading worship by yourself, or you're you have an altar call and you're playing by yourself. Um, and and this is the most, for lack of a better word, vulnerable time mm -hmm. for the congregation. They just heard the message. Um, this is where God is really hitting at their heart, um, and 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 you're you're setting an atmosphere. Yeah, like you said, this is continuing that atmosphere. Um, yeah, play what is important in the song, right? Yeah, and th this th to to encompass this whole thing um, for whether it's an altar call, worship set, or, or leading worship by yourself. Like like I said in the last episode, if this, if you only hear one thing from this uh, from this episode, play what's important in the song. And and leave out what isn't needed. Yeah. Mm. Any any final thoughts for you guys? No, I just just that like if you if you are a solo worship leader, if you're if you're by yourself, own it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rachel said uh, you you need to approach this with a holy confidence. Uh, the Lord has put you in this position for a reason. He has a a plan for you in this role. Uh, he has anointed you for this season and for yeah. this responsibility. Own that. Uh, take take ownership of it. Prepare uh, and be confident that the Lord is going to use you uh, for His glory. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys for coming in uh, and and joining me uh, for for this third episode. Tips for leading worship by yourself. Um, this this is once again very very important stuff. Yeah. Um, and and will will be beneficial. Hopefully, uh, be beneficial to you leading worship by yourself. If you have. Uh, questions or um, uh, want, wanting tips from us on how to build your team, that's for next week uh, in, in episode number four. Come back, come back for that episode. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of Worship Leading for Small Churches. If you liked this episode, we would appreciate if you'd like and share this with others. Tune in next Wednesday at 10 a.m. where we continue our discussion. We will see you next time. Thank you for listening, and God bless. <laughs>